Okay, so get ready because this deep dive is not stay with you, I think. Yeah. We're going on a journey with uh, Wardang Lueth. Mm -hmm. And Lueth is a South Sudanese refugee who shares his story in this book, The Future Ahead, War and Willingness to Live. Wow. And I, I mean, the title alone, right? That's powerful. It just grabs you. Yeah, it really does. It speaks to, I think, such a profound resilience, you know, when you're facing just unimaginable circumstances and finding the will, not even to, just to survive, but to look ahead, to think about the future ahead. And let me tell you, Louis does not sugarcoat anything. His writing is raw and it's honest. And I have to say, when I started reading it, I literally was thinking, everyone needs to hear this perspective. Yeah. This isn't just about war. It's about what comes after the headlines fade and you're left to pick up the pieces of your life. Absolutely. And he, he starts by taking us back to his childhood in Pariang mm -hmm. in South Sudan. And he paints this picture of a town that's you know, brimming with oil wealth. Right. Yet so much of the population is devastatingly poor because of corruption. It's that contrast, right? Yeah. That really struck me. He talks about his childhood holding so much promise, which makes the outbreak of civil war even more heartbreaking. Yeah. And he says, I'm quoting here, as a child, I never worried about food or clothes. I never imagined a day would come when we would be forced to flee our home. And you can feel that loss of innocence. Oh, absolutely. So strongly in his words. And this is where I think it gets really, really real. He doesn't shy away from sharing the horrors that he witnessed and losing family members, the constant fear. He talks about how those experiences still haunt him today. And that's something so important for us to consider. You know, that the trauma of war, it doesn't just disappear. It stays, it stays with individuals, with families, with entire communities. And I think Luth's story is a powerful reminder of the human cost of conflict. You know, those invisible scars that linger long after the fighting has stopped. He talks about witnessing things no child ever should, and I just can't imagine the strength it took for him to keep going through all of that. What's remarkable is how he conveys the emotional impact of what he went through. He says, sometimes when I close my eyes, I can still hear the gunfire, smell the burning, and see the faces of those we lost. Wow. And this is what we mean, right, when we talk about the deep and lasting wounds of war. It's like you said, right, those scars, those wounds, they really do run deep. They do. Yeah. And it's in those moments of you know, real honesty in this book that you start to grasp, I think, the true cost of war. Mm -hmm. And it's not just about physical displacement, right? It's about, I think, the internal displacement. Right. The struggle to kind of reconcile the life that you had with the one that you're being forced to build. Yeah, and he talks about this so powerfully. He has this one line that says, becoming a refugee means leaving behind more than just a place. It means leaving behind a part of yourself. Yeah. I mean, that really, that one hit hard. It did. It's like he's carrying the weight of two worlds. Yeah. Right. The one that he fled and the one that he's trying to rebuild. And that journey, as you can imagine, it's filled with, you know, just these contradictions. Oh, absolutely. He talks about the constant fear, the uncertainty, but then there's this incredible determination to keep going. Like even even in the refugee camps, he's seeking out education, you know, clinging to any opportunity to learn. Because his thirst for knowledge became this lifeline. Yeah. He says in the book, education for me was never just about getting a job, right? It was about reclaiming my mind, my sense of purpose yeah. in a world that had been turned upside down. It's so powerful. It's like he's saying, you can take away my home, but you can't take away my will to learn to grow. Exactly. And this is where I think his story takes another really interesting turn. He starts to grapple with some really big questions, questions about faith, about God's role in suffering. Mm -hmm. He writes, how could a loving God allow so much pain, so much loss? And I think that's I know, a question a lot of us wrestle with when we see or experience terrible things in the world. It's that search for meaning, right? Yeah. When the world feels so chaotic and unfair, it's natural to start to question those bigger beliefs. Absolutely. And what I think is so compelling about Lewis is that he doesn't shy away from these questions. Right. Right. He leans into them. He explores them, again, with this really raw honesty. And through that process, he arrives at, I think, a really unique perspective. He starts to identify as multicultural. That's right. He talks about how his experiences have given him this ability to connect with people from different backgrounds, to bridge those cultural divides. It's like displacement, as painful as it was, it also opened him up to new ways of seeing the world. Yeah. And I think that's such an important point. His story, I think, challenges us to think about 
you know, these complexities of identity, mm -hmm. particularly in a world where so many people are displaced, right? forced to create new lives, you know, far from home. Right. And it makes you realize that identity isn't just about where you're from, but it's also about the experiences that shape you, the perspectives that you gain along the way. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And I think for Lewis, those experiences have fueled this incredible drive to create positive change, not just for himself, but for the future of Africa. It's really inspiring to hear him talk about it. You yeah, know? It is. And you can feel that passion in his writing when he starts to talk about you know, the future of Africa. And for him, it's not just about rebuilding. Right. It's about rethinking. He challenges like those traditional narratives about you know, aid and development. He says, and this is a quote, Africa doesn't need handouts. It needs a hand up. We need to invest in our own people, in our own ideas, and break free from this cycle of dependency. It's about reclaiming that agency, right? right? Shaping your own destiny. Exactly. Mm. And that ties into, I think, his whole philosophy on success and failure, which I find so refreshing. Yeah. He says, success isn't about, you know, the size of your house or the car that you drive. Right. It's about the impact you have on the world, the lives that you touch, the contributions that you make. It's not about the material wealth, but how you leave the world, right? Yeah. A little bit. It's a really inspiring perspective. It is. And it's a perspective that's, you know, forged in the fires of just unimaginable hardship. Yeah. And so when he talks about overcoming obstacles, he doesn't just mean, you know, physical ones. He's talking about overcoming, I think, the mental and emotional toll of war, mm. of displacement, of losing everything that you hold dear. It's that resilience and that just unwavering belief in the human spirit. Yeah. And that's what shines through. He reminds us that even in the darkest times, we still have choices to make. It's true. And he says it so beautifully. There will always be a choice to make in life. We can choose to be defined by our past, or we can choose to rise above it. We can choose to succumb to fear, or we can choose to embrace hope. I mean, those words really have stayed with me. There will always be a choice to make in life. It's a powerful reminder that we have more agency, I think, than we often realize, even when we're facing incredible challenges. It is. Yeah. And that's the ultimate message of hope, you know, that Lewis leaves us with. It's a call to action for all of us. What choices are we making in our own lives? Right. How can we contribute to a more peaceful, a more equitable world? How can we support those who have been displaced, who are you know, rebuilding their lives far from home? His story, I mean, really is a testament to just the power of the human spirit mm -hmm. to overcome adversity, to create a better tomorrow. It is. And if you are looking for a story that will challenge your assumptions, inspire you to action, and leave you with a renewed sense of hope, I urge you to check out the future ahead, war and willingness to live, mm. you will not regret it. Well said. And that, I think, is going to do it for us today. A huge thank you to my guest. And to all of you listening, thanks for joining us for this incredibly moving and thought-provoking deep dive.